Okay, before we get started, um, I wanted to tell you guys about a cool experience that happened yesterday in our mastermind group. So we had uh, the, our group that paid $25,000 to meet with them yesterday morning in, I guess it was this room. Yeah, it was chopped in half. So we were right here hanging out in our mastermind group. And one of our members, Walter, uh, been working on his front end project for a little while and we challenged him. I said, hey, if you can go tonight, go back to your hotel room and create your entire front end uh, free plus shipping offer tonight before you come back tomorrow morning, I'll give you $100. And guess what, guys? He got it all done. Let's give him a round of applause. There you go. So, and uh, that should be symbolic for all you guys. Like, getting crap done makes you money all day long. I promise you that. So, um, I'm, I'm excited for him. He's coming a long way, and we got a lot of cool stuff we're going to do with him. So, I wanted to start today, or th this session, um, and this entire event kind of with this concept because um, the internet's really changed how business is done. It's not the same now as it used to be um, back when I was a kid at all. At all. It's changed a lot. And uh, I think one of the, the, the big differentiators from those who are making a little bit of money online, those making a lot of money online, is this concept we're going to talk about called the attractive character. And some of you guys have heard me talk about it before, but i got some really cool new things to, to share uh, about it. Now, the first time I ever heard this concept, um, I was in an event, and I heard this dude get up on stage, and, uh, and he started talking about uh, his business. And he was in the how to pick up chicks market. Okay? Anyone here in the how to pick up chicks market? Usually we have a couple, none of them. Well, that was his whole business, right? And uh, his name is John Allenis, and he's, he's awesome. He's one of my a close friends now. He's, he's spoken at three or four of our, of our events on this topic. And, um, and it had a huge impact on me. He got in there and he said, look, guys, he's like, what I, you know, he's like, I don't normally teach marketing training, but he's like, what I teach is I teach guys how to present themselves in a way to get women to come to them, okay? For the men in the room, who would like to have women just walk up to you and start hitting on you, Okay? <laughs> So one thing that's a good example of like an irresistible offer, right? But that's something like don't just change yourself and women will come flock to you. So that's, that's kind of his big, big hook. And he said, look, the, the concepts I teach my men about how to get women to come to them is exactly the same stuff I'm going to talk to you guys about today. It's the same. The laws of attraction are the same. If you create and present yourself in a certain way, people will be attracted to you. Just like you'd want a girl to be attracted to you. If you want clients and customers and people to work with to be attracted to you, there's a certain way you, you kind of, you, you create your persona to, to do that. And so that was the first time I ever talked, I ever heard someone talk about it. And what was interesting is when he kind of went, uh, when he kind of went through the, the concepts, it was the first time that I realized that from the success I had had at that point, I was doing some of the stuff that I didn't even know w was happening. And after I realized what, what was working, then I started kind of reverse engineering it and trying to, to do a bunch of stuff. And, and now it's, uh, it makes us a ton of money. And, um, and I think it's, again, the, the kind of the first foundational stone I think any kind of internet business needs to, to know and to understand is how to create and develop your own attractive character. So one thing we're going to do is we're going to go through this, uh, this worksheet here in a minute. It should be inside of all your guys' books. Um, well, the last time I taught this, um, there was a guy named Mark Call in the room. And uh, after I was done, Mark called so that he'd paid over $25,000 to learn this stuff that we broke down in this one little handout here. So he said, I literally, if I had not paid these other guys already, I'd have paid you $25,000 for that piece of paper. So to put that in perspective, what you're going to learn in this session um, is worth a lot um, if you take and actually, and actually apply it and to use it. Okay? So before we start, though, I want to talk about some people. Here's a guy named Jacob Hiller. Who's ever heard of Jacob before? A couple of you guys, the ClickBank crew do. So Jacob is a, he is a cool, a cool guy. So when he was in college, well actually when he was born, his arms were like a little bit shorter than, than most people. Like his wingspan's not quite as long, right? And so when he jumped, he could never dunk. And it really bothered him. Like, how come I can't dunk? In fact, we did this thing where we stood next to each other. My, I think my hands, my win, wingspan was longer than him. But he could, and I think we're about the same height, but he could dunk. And he's like, it always bugged me that I, that I had these shorter arms and I couldn't dunk. And so my whole life I was passionate about like learning how to jump better. So I did exercises and things and I just, he became obsessed with learning how to jump higher, right? And, uh, and just like I was talking about, like, that was his superpower. Like, I got to figure out how to make myself jump higher. And then the internet came about, came around, and he, he saw YouTube, and he's like, I'm going to make videos teaching people how to jump higher, because that's what I'm doing all day. Let's just, let's, let's just record and put it out there. So he started making videos of himself jumping and showing what he was doing, and all the, the stretches and the exercises and all these things he was doing to increase his vertical, right? And he made videos and videos for probably, I don't know, a year, two years. He was just making videos with no intent to ever make money. He was just trying to share his value with the world, right? Try to help people out. And what happened um, is his following on YouTube started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. The basketball players started following him. The, the football players, all these athletes started following him because 
he was showing all this free, cool stuff, and they just loved it, and they were getting more and more value out of it. And eventually he had, I don't know the numbers, 40, 50,000 people on YouTube who were following him and uh, getting all this stuff for free. And he's like, hey, I got an idea. What if I like, took all this stuff I'm teaching him and I sold it to him instead? And so he had that idea, um, and he came out, and he, he uh, created a video, or uh, um, a book called The Jump Manual. And uh, what's interesting about this, and the reason why I want to tell you guys his story is, he started with his platform first, right? And he didn't know what he was doing, but he was building out his platform, okay? And we're going to be stressing a lot of that throughout this session, is just building out your platform. He built this platform, and he had an audience, okay? Now he has an audience, he's talking to you every single day, and all of a sudden he's like, hey guys, I want to sell you something. What happens? It becomes really easy to sell stuff. So we created the jump manual, he started selling it, and um, to kind of put this in perspective, um, uh, I think right now, the last time I, I haven't talked to him for a while, but last time I looked at, they were doing anywhere from $1,500 to $3,000 a day, every single day, selling this little jumping book. Okay, teach people how to, how to jump higher. Anyone here know how to jump? Okay, BJ can jump. Um, it's interesting, now, now Jacob was smart and he kind of crafted a lifestyle around this. Okay, he got this thing that's working, he was making money, he already had a platform, he was teaching people what he loves, what he's passionate about. And Jacob and his wife, now their, their, uh, their child here, they haven't had a home in, I think, six years, five or six years now. What they do is that they open up uh, like a, an Atlas River and they pick a country. Like, hey, let's move to China today. And they'll pack up all their stuff and they fly to China and they live there for three months. And they get to know the people. He jumps with the Chinese people and makes videos and talks about it. And three months later, he's like, okay, we're bored. Where should we go to now? Uh, let's go to Kenya. And they pack up, they fly to Kenya, and for five years, that's how they lived their life. Okay, he was in Kenya making videos of him jumping with the Masimara village uh, um, people, and makes videos showing people, and then goes to the next place, the next place. And he's got a blog that documents him going all these different places, and they literally live out of these suitcases and have for over five years now, and they've traveled all around uh, the entire world. And it's one of the most fascinating things in the world, and this little business he's created has completely funded the entire thing. Okay, now what's cool about this is, Again, he didn't come in, this is what I talked about a little earlier last session. He didn't come in like, I gotta make money, I gotta make money. I'm gonna make this jumping ebook. And then I'm gonna say, like, that was not his, his core desire. His core desire was, how do I serve people? How do I, what can I give? What can I, what can I do? And we did that, he started building a following, he got a platform, and then he was able to sell people stuff on that platform, right? Okay. Um, another example, this is now more of a, a traditional business. Anyone um, ever seen this guy before? Gary Vaynerchuk. Okay. So Gary's story is really interesting. So Gary, um, and this is probably eight years ago now or so, maybe 10, I don't even know how long, um, but his family owned a wine business. Okay? His dad owned a wine store. He worked there his whole life growing up. And the wine business was doing about $3 million a year. Okay? Then this whole internet thing came about, and Gary's like, I got some ideas. I, I'm passionate about wine. I like talking, talking about wine. I'm going to make a, a wine show. So it was called Wine Library TV. He went on on started making these little, these little videos that were just, ghetto videos, like, like iPhone style videos, probably pre-iPhone, and every single day he did a show talking about wine, drinking wine, talking it, smelling it, all the weird stuff people do with wine, right? And just started doing that, and guess what happened? People like him were attracted to him, and they started listening to him, and started following him, and eventually he built a following of hundreds of thousands and millions of people, and his little tiny wine shop went from making $3 million a year to $45 million a year by his, through his attractive character. Okay, this attractive character, and I'm going to show you a bunch of examples, it's literally like you can attach this to any business and it's like putting it on steroids. Like it takes something that's selling, kind of doing it right, and just like fires it up and, and helps it grow uh, really, really rapidly. Okay? And again, it all came from him just sharing his passion and his excitement and his, his energy about wine. Now he ran that for, I think, four or five years and he shut it down. And he started a marketing company doing the exact same thing, coming out there and just sharing his passion, doing it, and just building a platform which then people come and, and they, they buy stuff. Now what's interesting is with his, with his like, his, uh, his show, he doesn't even like sell wine on it. He's just talking about wine all the time. And because he's there, people come and they start buying his stuff. They, they seek him out because he's the attractive character. Okay, another good example of this is someone named Oprah Winfrey. Anyone heard of her before? Okay, Oprah's a really cool example because when she grew up in her life, I don't know if you guys read her, her story. I, I, I reread it this last week because it was interesting. Um, she, she was, uh, her mom was, a, was a, a young teen when she was born. Uh, she went through a horrible life. I just, just, all sorts of trials after trials after trials. Um, and then she got on, she got on like a, a local news station and people just fell in love with her, with her character, right? The whole attractive character thing that she put out there. Um, and eventually, just from her being passionate, being who she is, she was able to go through the ranks, to eventually where she, she created the show, The Oprah Show. Anyone ever seen the show Oprah before? None of the guys raised their hand, none of the women. You guys never seen Oprah, are you kidding me? Um, and then after that, she went on and created the Oprah Winfrey Network. Now what's interesting, 
if you look at like if you look at like what Oprah what Oprah did, and you look at like the um, uh, like the phenomenon, like there were people I've met who went on her show back when she was the, the Oprah show, and they would pitch their book or they'd pitch their product, and literally companies would go out of business because they get so much sales, so many sales so fast because she's like, oh, this is my favorite, blah, and all of a sudden the entire world went and would buy the thing, and companies would go bankrupt because they couldn't afford, they couldn't handle all the orders that were coming in. They call it the Oprah effect because she had this big following, this big attractive character, all this stuff, and she would share it, and people would buy it. Okay, and you look at like. And this is kind of the, the long-term vision for all you guys. The short term is we gotta start building you guys platforms. That's that's the first part. But long term, when you own your own platform, what's cool is you can start spinning off brands. Okay? Anyone heard of Dr. Phil, Dr. Oz? Okay, these are all people that she brought on her show. She made them who they are, she spun them off, and I'm not positive, but I'm pretty dang sure that she's getting a cut off every single thing any of those people make. Okay? Then she created the Oprah Winfrey Network, all these shows are going, she's making money off all of these different deals. Um, so the long term, the long term plan. Is uh, is you got to build your own your own distribution, and build your own your own network, your own brand, and then from there you can do all sorts of stuff. The other things we talked about yesterday, um, with Shiloh, she was talking about like, so after I build my brand, I can sell all sorts of stuff. Like yeah, after you like, I sell all sorts of things now. Okay, I can sell this, and then I can do all sorts of stuff because I have my own distribution channel, I have my own my own my own brand. Okay, and so that's kind of the the key. That's one of the big things um, if you guys understand is like the the core goal of of what we're doing is building a distribution channel. Okay, if you look at like internet marketing, we're gonna talk a lot about this over the next couple of days, but one of our main goals is to build a list, right? To build a big email list. What is an email list? Okay, it's an audience, it's a that's it, platform. We're getting closer. It's on the it's on the board. It's a distribution channel, right? Okay. If I was Oprah, my distribution channel is TV. I get on TV, I pitch a product, and boom, we sell a whole bunch of stuff. Okay, for me, I don't have my I don't have my own TV show, but I got my own list. It's my distribution channel. Okay? I started thinking about things as a distribution channel that changed like my focus. You think about Gary Vaynerchuk, when he was selling wine, that show was his distribution channel. Okay? Um, anyone here watch the show Shark Tank? Okay, it was interesting, if you watch Shark Tank, and BJ and I have actually had this conversation, a couple, I think you might have been the one that first brought to my attention, but you look at the deals, right? You've got like Damon John up there, and Damon's like the clothing guy, right? And you look at all the deals that come his way, guess which ones Damon only pays attention to? When some guy's like, hey, I made this really cool shirt, and he's like, oh, cool. And Damien gives the guy money. Why does he give him money? Because Damien's got this distribution channel that's built. So all he does is like, here is $100,000. He calls this guy, hands him off to here, and boom, he makes a million and just walks away. He doesn't have to do anything. Okay? When, uh, when Kevin Harrington was on the show, what was, his, what was his distribution channel? Infomercials. So he sit there and he watched these offers, like, nope, nope, that one worked on infomercial. He gives him some money, hands it off, and he's done. Okay, because he's got a distribution channel already in place. Lori. Okay, same thing, she's got QVC. If a product works in QVC, she takes it, why? Because it's a distribution channel. All those guys have their distribution channels, and you look at like why they take offers, it has 100% to do with, do I already have a distribution channel I can plug this into? That's it, that's all they look at, okay? So if you guys are, are, are getting this, like the, the biggest goal, the biggest thing you guys can be focusing on is building a distribution channel, because when you have that, you can do anything. Okay, I'm gonna show you a lot of different ways you can do that. You can do it through, through email lists, you can do it through YouTube channels, you can do it through your blog, there's, there's tons of ways to do it. But the main goal is we've got to have those distribution channels because it makes it so that literally someone come to me and give me any product and I can turn it into cash that fast because I have existing distribution channels I can just plug it into. Okay? And I want that for you guys as well. Um, uh, yeah, all right. So a couple examples that people you may, may have heard of. So again, distribution channels first and the way that we build that typically is around an attractive character. So this is an example of a software company um, a couple of their products, Kiss Metrics and Crazy Egg. Anyone ever heard of these products before? Okay. Now, if you look at Kiss Metrics, for example, the entire sales process is one headline. Like that's that's the entire thing, right? And I think that the, the lowest thing is like three or five grand a month to, to buy it. Okay. Who here wants to go buy their product? You don't know what it is. Well, we got one guy because he knows what it is, but no one knows what it is, right? Okay. Crazy Egg, they did a little better job selling, but they don't really. They're they're not that good at selling. But they got this dude named Neil Patel who's awesome, okay? You look at an attractive character, Neil's like an attractive character. Now Neil's not very good at emailing, he sucks at Facebook, horrible at videos, but Neil is awesome at blogging. And every single day he wakes up and he writes a blog post and he writes it and he writes so good that a whole, like, uh, I think a couple hundred thousand people get it and it's so good that like, all of us are like, check this out, we post it on Facebook and we do all this marketing for him and we start spreading his message because it's so good. Okay? And every day he posts, he posts one blog post a day, it's all he does every single day, and he's taking the, by talking marketing principles, and then he's like, oh, by the way, my software does that. Oh, by the way, it does this, and built these huge multi, multi-million dollar companies off of that. 
Okay, almost no selling whatsoever, just putting his attractive character out there to launch a software business. Okay, so if any of you guys have a software business, think about a software business, that's one thing, but you attach an attractive character to it, it's like steroids, it makes it explode, makes it grow really, really fast. Okay, here's another one, here's, this is how this works in like a fast food company. Okay, I'm sure you guys have been to Subway before. Subway used to be a fast food restaurant, just like McDonald's, Burger King, everything else. And they were really struggling, they couldn't compete with the rest of them. And one day, they met this dude who was like 800 pounds, his name is Jared, and Jared did nothing but eat Subway for two years straight and went from this guy to this guy. And someone in Subway was smart enough to look at that and say, you know what? We can reinvent ourselves, not as a fast food restaurant like everybody else, but we can become a weight loss plan. You guys realize that fast, like Subway is different than everything else because they're not a fast food restaurant. They're a weight loss plan. And for 10 plus years, this guy Jared's been on every single commercial and he's the attractive character, right? People who are struggling to lose weight, they see this and look at Jared and say, wow, look what he did. I want to do that. It worked for him, it's got to work for me. And that attractive character is what's made Subway as big and as, as awesome as they are. Okay, and I don't think their food's even that good. Like compared to like Quiznos, Quiznos tastes way better, right? But what's Quiznos ever? Like who's, who's Quiznos? Like it's toasty, yeah, is that an attractive character? No, but there's this dude who's selling like not that good tasting food. In fact, I read this whole article that was crazy about like how bad Subway's food actually is for you. Like it's like killing people, but it helps, it helps Jared. So it's gotta help you, right? Okay, yeah, it's, it's bad news. But this is like the power of an attractive character, okay, in a, in a fast food restaurant, okay? Movies. Think about movies like Ocean's 12 is a good example, right? Who here knew the premise before they went to that movie? Who here knew that all those people were in it and you're like, holy crap, one of those people that you probably like a lot, right? Everyone's got a favorite. Matt Damon's like my man, like that guy's awesome. The movie's in, I wanna see. The rest of them are like, all right for me, but he's like my favorite person. Some of you guys are Brad Pitt fans, some of you guys are Julia Roddy, like, they jump, throw a whole bunch of attractive characters in the movie and people show up, right? Have you ever heard people like, oh yeah, I want to go see that new, uh, the new Tom Hanks movie? What's it called? I don't know, Tom Hanks is in it, I want to go see it. How often does that happen? All the time, right? You make a crappy movie, throw an A-level celebrity, attractive character, whatever you want to call it, and suddenly that movie becomes awesome. Suddenly people start showing up, okay? You can have crappy products, you guys, and as long as there's an attractive character, people will show up, okay? Think about all the bad movies you've been to. Uh, here's another one, insurance. Okay, do you know Flow is the highest paid, uh, uh, in, what's it called, brand person right now in the world? She makes crazy money, and there are actual, I think John was telling me this, there's like Facebook groups about people that hate her, like millions of people who are like protesting her and banning her and want her dead, and she makes so much money, okay? This little stupid gecko, an attractive character, right? The caveman, like, think about how Geico uses this attractive character stuff, right? All the time, okay? It works for selling insurance. Um, so this is uh, Rachel Jackson, anyone here know Rachel? So two years ago, guess what? Rachel was sitting in one of these seats, just like you guys. We talked about attractive characters, she put herself out there, and she started building this brand and this following, all these people fell in love with her. And then one day, she's like, you know what? There's this really cool company over here called Visalis. They have a weight loss thing, I really like that. So she took herself and her brand into Visalis, and boom, exploded. Uh, here's her and her husband getting a check for $250,000, um, I don't know if she's the number one money earner, she might not be, but she's made millions and millions of dollars in the last two years through this company. Okay, she built a platform, she built her attractive character, and then she decided where she wanted to take it. This is the, the vehicle she put it in, and boom, overnight exploded. And a lot of you guys are into network marketing, so these are all, these are all things. People always come to me and they, and the first thing's like, hey, I, I'm in, in network marketing is a great example, I'm in this, this company, like, like how do I sell this company? I'm like, the first step is you don't sell the company. Forget about the company. The company's an afterthought. Nobody cares about that. No one's going to follow you and join you and take, go into the company because of the company. They're going to follow you and join you because of you. Okay, you look at all the successful leaders in any of the companies, what do they have? They've got a following. They've got a distribution channel. And they can take people wherever they want. That's what's hard about network marketing is, is, is most people don't have that. And so it's like, how do you replicate that? Yeah, I got 100,000 followers. Like, when we won the Ferrari, right? I, I, the Pure Leverage came out. It's a good company. They had the giveaway of Ferrari. I promoted it, took my followers there, made a bunch of money, got a Ferrari, but like no one else can do that. They could, but they gotta do these other steps first. You gotta build your following first, then you can do whatever you want, okay? You can literally use this to sell anything, you guys. Here's an example of a guy named Howard Stern. And we're gonna talk about controversy, but uh, Howard is a great example of an attractive character. Whether you like him or you hate him. Who here likes him? Who here hates him? We're about 50-50, okay? It doesn't matter if you like him or hate him, you're talking about him, right? This is, this is the, if you look at, 
what's interesting is that he's got such a big following. When he first went on uh, Sirius Radio, they gave him like a 20 or $30 million a year contract just to, to show up. Okay? And now that he's on there, there's eyeballs, there's people, and all of a sudden, you can sell anything through that. Okay? I've got friends who have made millions of dollars just advertising on his show because just completely unrelated products just because there's, uh, there's eyeballs, there's viewership. Okay? Um, there's people I know who don't sell anything, but because they're so attractive, you get some people coming and listening, watching their videos or talking about whatever, whatever it is, you get some people in front of them, sponsorships come to them, people begging them to buy ads on the site, and you can make millions of dollars without even ever selling anything as long as you are an attractive character and you get that excitement, that engagement. Okay? Another interesting thing, you guys, guess why most of you guys are here right now? Okay? I'm guessing you didn't come because you heard there was some seminar in Boise, right? We use this every single day in all of our businesses. When I first heard this initially, this whole concept from, from John Allness, he was talking about it, and, and I started thinking about my business. And, and prior to that, um, I looked at when I first started my business, I was, I was wrestling at Boise State. I'd just gotten married, and I was telling a lot of stories about my wrestling stuff. And when I would go to events like this, and I would, I would go and I'd speak and I'd sell at events, I would notice that like, the people who would come and buy from me in the back of the room, it was like 99% of them were like me. It was weird. They come back like, hey, man, I was an athlete too. I played football. Hey, man, I did. And, and like whatever stories I told, they were like the same as me. And they, those people that followed me, the people that bought from me. And then a couple years later is when, um, when uh, my wife and I were trying to get pregnant. And some of you guys have probably seen this video. We're not going to watch it. This is the, one of the videos that Jonathan did for us. But I told, I told our story about fertility um, and the whole process we went through. So I remember the very first time I was at a seminar, and I wasn't planning on, on saying it because it was kind of a private thing for us. But for whatever reason, I was talking, and sometimes when you're on stage, like, things just start coming out. And I apologize this weekend. I'm sure things are going to come out, and you guys are going to be like, that guy is weird. But some things just start coming out sometimes, right? And so all of a sudden, I start telling the story, and I'm like, oh, crap. But it was, like, already out, and people are smiling, and just got to show off at that point. So I'm telling this whole story about our, our, our struggle with trying to have kids and going through fertility and everything that happened with, uh, in relation to that. And then I finished my presentation, and I sold something at the end. And what was interesting is I remember going to the back of the room, and all these people... You guys have been to those seminars before, right? We sell them and everyone runs to the back. Well, I'm not going to do that here unless you guys want me to. But, um, but I used to speak at a lot of those. And, and I remember going to the back of the room, and there was me, and there was all these, uh, these couples back there, and all these women, so many women who were like, man, I struggle with that too. And, and, uh, and my, my audience changed. And I was like, wow, it's just interesting um, how different that is. And then fast forward a couple years later, um, we sold a lot of products like Russell's face on it, right? And, and got our same audience. And then uh, one day we have... Uh, Two of our friends, and one of them's in the room right now. Um, and we did this big contest, and we gave away a Corvette. Does anyone remember that? Zan Spencer won the, the Corvette from us, him and his wife. And so uh, they did. They created this hair bow business, teaching people how to tie hair bows. And they're making twenty to thirty grand a month, and built, ran it for a bunch of years. They just recently sold it, and and uh, but anyway, they, they they did this thing right. And so we wanted, like, we gave them a, a Corvette. We want to brag about it. Like, we had to make back my sixty or seventy grand it cost to buy this Corvette, right? So we did a whole product launch kind of around their story and what happened and what we did. And, and they were like a brand new newlywed couple. They won this Corvette. They traveled around the country and everything. And so we, we sold that one out there. And then what was interesting is the next event we did kind of like this, um, in the audience there was like six or seven couples of, of newlywed couples sitting in the audience. I was like, how weird is that? Just the fact that I used their story got those people to sit in the room. I was like, That's just, it's really, it was really fascinating to me. So I started thinking like, what other things can I share? And so a little while later, we launched a product called Microcontinuity. And, uh, and kind of like this event, this event John, Jonathan was saying, is like, it's interesting like how we're probably like 95% men and a couple women here. And that's how a lot of my events are. I guess women don't think I'm very attractive, apparently. Um, but uh, the men love me. So, uh, so anyway, we were, uh, <laughs> see, this is one of those things that just come out that I just like, I should have, <laughs> can I rewind that? Anyway, um, and so we're doing this, this product launch, Microcontinuity, and and, when, uh, and one of the people that had done it was a, uh, a girl named Joy Anderson. She had done had tons of success with it. So we featured her story instead of my own, kind of like Subway. Instead of talking about the owner of Subway, we, we talked about Jared. So I talked about Joy. I'm like, look, look what Joy did with the system, how great she did, and told her whole story. And the next event we came to, um, literally, it was 50-50, half women, half men. And we surveyed people at the end of it to find out what it was that got them to come to the event. And almost every single woman, word for word, wrote out, I want to be Joy Anderson. I was like, isn't that interesting? So what you're putting out there, you guys, is going to attract different people. And so when you understand that, you can start, you can start architecting that and, and creating things to make sure you get the, the right kind of person coming through this. Okay? All right. So again, the, the goal and the key with this whole thing is you, you create a distribution channel, but that happens around the attractive character. Okay? So each of you guys are going to have to learn. We're going to teach you right now how to become an attractive character. Now, what's cool about this is that even 10 years ago, this was not possible. Okay? It did not work. 
Okay, and the reason why it was too expensive. Oprah was able to get on TV and do it because she went through this process, took her years and years and years to get on TV, now she's got this distribution channel. But for most of us, I'm not gonna get on TV. It's too hard, right? And so for a long time it was not possible, but the internet has made it possible for all of us to become internet famous. All of us become celebrities in our own little, in our own little space, okay? People like, because uh, of things like YouTube. Um, in fact, I was showing Troy this this morning. Um, I was driving in. I shouldn't be driving while I'm on my phone, but. And I, my wife did have me sign the Oprah pledge. Um, so I'm totally, I don't know if I can find it real quick. Ah, I'm not gonna be able to find it. There was this video and uh, Mark Joyner had posted it and he was like, he's like, this is the most motivational video I've ever seen. You should watch it. So I'm like, oh, I'm driving in. I'm gonna watch this motivational video. I click on it and there's this little handicapped kid. Troy, is Troy still here? Do you walk out? Okay, this little handicapped kid in, in a wheelchair with a headband on and I was like, all right, so I click play, and this this guy, and he's, like, at first I was really confused, like, like is this going to be inappropriate, what's going to happen, you know, and he starts, like, yelling, and it's called, like, Workout Wednesdays, anyone seen this guy before? He's like, it's Workout Wednesdays, and he's yelling, he's screaming, he's motivating, and he's literally a handicapped guy in the wheelchair, and he's, like, trying to work out in his wheelchair, and, and like, I was laughing so hard, it was, like, the most entertaining, funny thing, I'm laughing, and, and he's, like, like, making fun of himself, and then throwing, like, these motivational things, and, and storyline, and, like, it's amazing, right? And I was like crying. I was literally crying when I'm watching this. And I click the next one. I'm watching like three or four while I'm driving here, tears down my eyes, hoping not to get in a wreck before this event today. And I was just like, this guy is amazing. And I looked down at his views, and every single video I just watched had over a million views on it. I was like, this dude, despite all of his challenges and his whatever in his life, has understood this principle. He's built a distribution channel. He's got a million people watching each of his videos. He, he's done over 100 videos now. I was checking it out this morning. Over 100 videos, huge following. I don't know what he's selling. He might not be selling anything, but if he wanted to, he could. He's got the distribution channel first. Okay? So for you guys, it all starts first off with this, the attractive character. And we're going to talk about next, about, about for each of you, what, what distribution channel, what are you going to build? Is it going to be email lists? Is it going to be blogs? Be, like, everyone's going to be different. But right now, the biggest key is you've got to understand how, how to build that attractive character. So a couple things, first off with each of you guys, because this is going to be the hardest part about building an attractive character, and I've seen it every single time, is that whatever is special about you is so second nature to you that you don't think it's worth any, you don't think it's of any value. Um, I'm going to pick on Walter again, I hope you don't mind, but I think it's important. So I was talking to him the very first call we did, and, uh, and uh, we were trying to figure out like what's the right angle for him, the right niche and everything, and, and he kind of blows off, he's like, well, I'm like, what stuff do you do, what are you passionate about, what do you like to do? He's like, well, I'm... You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a vegetarian, I kind of do vegan stuff, and you know, I, I'm a cook, and I cook a lot of stuff, and over the last five years, you know, I've, I've learned a whole bunch of like, lazy ways to cook vegetarian food, but it's really easy, and it kind of rolls on. I'm like, wait, 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 I'm like, dude, like, that's awesome. I was like, me, for example, I've tried to be vegetarian like five times. It usually lasts about a day. One time I made it two days, but it's hard. Has anyone tried it before? Like, it is really, really, really hard, because like, what do you cook, and like, you go to the grocery store, and there's celery, and you're like, all right, and avocados are good. But like after like a day, some reason avocado, like what else is it, right? And I'm just like, I don't know what to do. And he's like, I got a lazy way. I just cook a lot of really good food that way. I'm like, dude, I would right now write you a check for that information. But for him, it's second nature. Didn't even think about it, right? All of us have these things. We have these superpowers that are second nature to us. Like, like think about X-Men, right? These guys can fly. It's not a big deal for them flying since they're a little kid. If I could fly, like I would give a lot of money for that, right? All you guys have, have superpowers. Um, I'm going to pick on, on Susie over here. So... Um, uh, Kimberly first met her um, driving uh, a taxi. She was driving a taxi over to her office, Kimberly, and uh, they were talking, and she's like, uh, Kimberly's talking about what she does, and she's like, oh, yeah, well, I, I, um, I sprout my own grains, and then I make all this stuff out of them. And everyone in our office is, like, health conscious, and we're like, you can sprout your own grain? Like, this is the most fascinating thing in the world. And she's like, oh, yeah, it's not a big deal. It's really easy, you know, and I'm like, that's, like, that's a superpower. Like, what you have, people will pay a lot of money for. Okay? And I promise you, for most of you guys, that's going to be the biggest holdup, is whatever your superpower is is so second nature to you that you're just blowing it off right now. Okay? But I promise you, there's people who will do anything in the world to pay you for that information. What you know right now. Okay? It doesn't have to be something um, that, that uh, you know, you don't have to be like, the best in the world. That's the other thing, is like, well, I'm not the best in the world. The reality is you don't have to be the best in the world. You just have to be better than everybody else out there. And the majority of people out there, like, I don't know anything about it. Like, as long as you can teach me how to do something better than carrots and avocados, like, you're, like, I'll pay you. Like, that, you just got to be a little bit better than me. Anyone ever seen the movie uh, Catch Me If You Can? So, um, really good movie, but what, part of the movie they didn't share that was in the book is, uh, what's the, guy's, the guy that Leo played? What's his real name? Anyone remember? It's a true story. Anyway, whatever his name is. Abingdale, yes. Yeah. So, if you read the book version of it, part of the book, 
Um, and I wish I would show this in the movie because it's fascinating. But he actually went to BYU down in Utah. And he showed up to class one day. And there was no teacher there. So he's like, all right. So he walks up, grabs the book, opens it up, and starts teaching the class. Right? Teaches the entire first day class. And then he taught the next day. And he teaches the entire semester before they catch him and realize that you're a student. What are you doing teaching the class? And it's like an advanced class, right? And like, first off, like, why did you do that? And second off, like, how did you know the material? And guess what he said? I just read the chapter ahead. Okay? No one's reading the chapter ahead. Like, as long as you know like, one chapter ahead of everybody else, you're the expert. Okay? Like, that's very important to understand, you guys. Like, all of a sudden, like, like even Walter, we're talking, he's like, oh, I got to learn this, this. I'm like, no, 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 no. Everything you know right now is perfect. You can add stuff later, but what do you know right now? That's what I want to buy right now. Don't wait a month, a week, a year for you to learn more and become better. Like, you're perfect the way you are, and you're going to evolve. You're going to get better, but you got to understand that what you have right now is a value today. You do not need to wait for a day, a week, a month, or you're like, today. Okay? It's very important, you guys, because I promise you this is what's going to keep a lot of you guys from doing this. Okay? You're going to be worried about it. All right. So we're going to slip over to the attractive character handout here. So this is, this is kind of the, the key to this whole thing, you guys. Um, this took me studying and learning and testing and practicing forever to be able to break this down into these are kind of the, uh, the, core, the core things. All right, so we've got elements on the side, identity on the other side, and the storylines down below. Again, this is foundational. We're going to be talking about tomorrow during the sales stuff and on Friday or Saturday about the emails. and Everything, everything is going to tie back to this concept, so it's important to understand it. And, and you'll see throughout the weekend how everything kind of weaves back to it. So the first thing, the first element that every good attractive character has is a backstory. And think about this from comic books you read, from movies, uh, from fiction books, like from anything that, that you've looked at, that you've been entertained in your life, they always have a good backstory, right? Any of you guys like the, the show Incredibles? It was interesting, that's like my favorite cartoon ever, none of our kids like it, it's so weird. But uh, Incredibles, like they have the, this, like when you sh the show starts like the two minute beginning of the backstory, about how they mean superheroes and they lose everything and then boom, it starts their, their real life, right? Everyone's got to have a good backstory, okay? Every good movie, every good character, they all have a good backstory, okay? Now, the reason why the backstory is so important is because right now, whatever you're selling, I don't care if you're selling insurance, if you're selling uh, information, coaching, supplements, whatever you're selling, you're taking somebody on a journey, right? They want to be where you're at, otherwise, why would they give you money, okay? For our neuropathy supplement, people are in pain, Okay, their hands and their legs are tingling, they're in pain, and if I tell them this is going to work, they're not going to believe it. But I have an attractive character who says, this is my backstory. I had pain just like you, I did this, now my pain's gone. Guess what happens? They start buying, they believe that. Okay? And so, every good character is a backstory. Okay, um, it's in, uh, one thing Dan Kennedy taught me, is he, talk, he called this uh, the, the, the guru on the mountain, right? So there's this guru on the mountain, and each of you guys, the attractive character, the guru, whatever you want to call yourself, you're this guru on the mountain, okay? And people, you want people to want to send up to you. Okay, we're going to talk more about that this, this week, but you want people to send up to you. But the problem is if they see this guru on the mountain, they're like, eh, that guy's, that guy's awesome. I can never get there. They're not going to want to be where you're at. The only way they want to be where they're at, they have to know that you walked in their steps at one point. Okay, your backstory is to tell them, I was just like you. If you're selling weight loss stuff, it helps a ton if you used to be overweight or if you used to struggle with things. So you can say, I was in the exact same spot you were. Let me show you what I did over here. Come on, follow me. And people are like, all right, I want to follow you. Okay? Um, it, it's, uh, it's key. So all you guys have a good backstory. Now, um, sometimes you wonder, like, what do we share in our backstory? What things are okay to share? What things should we not share? It really comes back to, like, what things, what things serve the purpose? What things are going to bring you to the same level as, as the people you're trying to serve? Okay? Um, I don't come to these events and dress in a suit and tie and everything because, first off, that's not me. But second off, like, I, I want you guys to feel like I'm like you because if, if you believe that you're just like me and you are, it's more likely you're going to come and, and follow me, right? If I'm like this, you know, like back in the day, the stage presentation always be the guys in suits and ties and all slick, like that stuff doesn't work as well anymore. Like what works is like being real and being who we are. And, and so you guys have heard my backstory multiple times because I'm trying to take, show you, man, this is, I was in the exact same spot. Come with me. Come on, let's do this stuff together. Okay, so backstory is key. Number two is parables, okay? All good teachers teach in parables, Okay, if you think of the greatest teacher, and I don't care what religion you are, but the greatest teacher of all time was Christ, right? And he taught in parables every single time for a lot of different reasons, okay? I would suggest that one of the main reasons why he did it is because um, when you hear something in a parable, you remember it, okay? Um, I'm sure you guys have noticed throughout today already, and throughout the rest of the week, you'll notice even more, I always share things in parables, okay? 
Um, I told you, what was the first one I did earlier? I even, I even called it out as a parable. When I was talking oh, about, about uh, Dr. Murley's class, right? Dr. Murley's class. So the reason why I told you as that parable, that was a story from my life. It's very true. Uh, but that story was to illustrate the point that this is going to be hard work, but it's a lot easier than the other alternative, right? And so what I do is every time in my life something cool happens to me, I'm like, how could I, how could I use that? Like, what's a par- like, how can I use that as a parable? Okay, Sean pinch testing me and telling me I'm fat was a parable I used to teach guys about measuring. I could stop here and talk about measuring for like an hour and you'd be like, this sucks, I hate Russell, I hope he dies. But I tell you a story about me being fat, you giggle a little bit and all of a sudden you relate to that and you will remember that forever. Okay, I think I've probably told at least five or six parables today and we're not even at lunchtime so far. So for each of you guys, you gotta start thinking about all these different experiences you've had in your life and what are the parables you have that can illustrate a point that's gonna help drive someone to, to take the action that you want them to take, okay? And sometimes it takes a little bit of while, it takes a little while. And uh, at first it'll take you a while to kind of remember some of these, some of the ones in the past. But then moving forward, I want you to, when things happen to you, um, remember those things and write them down like, oh, I can use that in a teaching situation. Okay, and you share that, excuse me, you share that parable, people are now going to remember that, that concept way, way better. Okay, it makes you a better teacher, it makes you more memorable, it makes you more prolific. There's a whole bunch of reasons why, um, but it just, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a key. Okay? And look at all of the good, attractive characters, all the gurus you follow in whatever space you're in. I promise you they all have, they all have parables they share. Okay? And so I would recommend tonight, tomorrow, and just start trying to list out as many as you can. Because I have, I have pages of different parables. And a lot of times, like I'll speak these events, I don't even know they're going to come out, but I, I've written them down in the past. And all of a sudden, like, I'll say something, and I'm like, oh, that parable, if I, if I share that story right now, it's going to help them. So I'll bring that parable out, boom, and share it. Okay? And so those things are just using all the time. So make sure you have parables. All right, number three is character flaws. Okay, this is also going to be very hard for most of you guys. It's hard to like share our flaws with people, right? Okay, but it's important because uh, nobody wants to follow someone who's perfect. Okay, you see someone who's perfect, it's like, oh, I can't be her. I can't be him. It's not like me. Like, that guy's awesome. Okay, the more I show you that I'm real, the more likely you are to follow me. Okay, look at every good character in TV. They all have character flaws. Even Superman, the person who is completely invincible, you put him around kryptonite, he dies. Okay, he's got a character flaw. If he didn't have that character flaw, he's Superman. Like, what's the point of watching a movie? He can't not win. But as soon as you introduce a character flaw, it gets interesting. Okay? It was interesting, um, if you look at like, like the different, the different um, comic book heroes throughout time, the ones that have the biggest traction and stuff, the ones with the character flaws always do better. Superman struggled more so than like a Batman, who's got tons of character flaws, right? Um, but if you look at, who here saw the most recent Superman movie? Okay, I, I was kind of nervous. I'm like, typically, like, I, I wasn't that excited to go see it. But what they did, I think one of the best jobs of, to, to illustrate character flaws, is when they told Superman's backstory, um, did you notice how, how um, because they couldn't talk about his physical flaws, because he's, he's invincible, right? But instead, they, they, they harped on these emotional flaws, like this insecurities that Superman had as a, as a kid growing up. And what was interesting is that, by the, by the time the movie, you know, backstory was in place, you felt all of his insecurities with him, and you felt all this stuff. And so when he accomplished and he conquered, you're like, yes, like you felt that with him, right? Typically in a Superman movie, you don't because he's just, he's a man of steel, he's invincible, who cares, okay? It's the same way with your audience, you guys. As soon as you're willing to open up and share your character flaws, man, people will start relating to you and start coming to you. It's, it's a key, and it's hard to do. Nobody likes to share their flaws with people, I promise you that, okay? But the more you're willing to kind of open those things up, um, the more likely they are to, to come in. All right. And then number four is polarity. So polarity is the opposite of neutrality. Okay? The other issue most of you guys are going to have is you're going to be really, really nervous about offending anybody. right? Because I don't want to offend people. Um, that's just the way human nature is. We don't want to offend people. But if you look at the people um, who are really, really successful, one like, common trait in almost all of them is how polar they are. They have very strong beliefs one direction or the other. They, they have these pol- they're, they're very polarizing. That's what they call them, right? They're very polarizing. Um, because neutrality is boring. If you, if you are completely neutral and you never disagree or do anything wrong, like, you're just boring. No one's going to listen to you. It's like Switzerland, right? Like, what, like, they're so neutral. Like, what side are you on? I don't know. Like, just leave us alone. Like, okay. You know? We look at other countries where there's, there's polar. Like, all of a sudden, it's interesting, right? Um, now, it's, now, what's going to be hard, and again, this is something you guys are going to have to learn learn to, to work with, because it's hard, really hard for me when I first kind of encountered it, is when you, are, when you cause polarity, two things happen. A group of people will become obsessed with you and love you and follow you and give you a ton of money. Okay, if you're neutral, they won't do that. 
But as soon as you're polar, they will. Okay? But polarity is that it happens on both sides. So as soon as you do that, there's going to be a group of people who suddenly start hating you. And that's hard. Okay? If you ever go who's ever Googled my name online before? Okay? You see the, the, the polar opposites of the two loudest people, right? And they're both there. I love Russell. I hate Russell. Like, they're both there. Okay? So as soon as you become polar, there's going to be negative people that fight against you. You're going to be scared and you're going to walk away and, you're going to, and it's hard. That's why it's important to have support people in between you and your customers because if you read every single support email that comes through, you'll quit trying. I promise you. I almost quit four or five times when I first got started because I'm out there trying to serve people the best I can and people are sending me angry emails. I'm like, are you serious? Like, I'm trying to help you and they're angry and that, it'll happen no matter what you're doing. No matter how much good in the world you're doing, people will get angry. Okay? Um, not to be, again, biblical or anything, but you look at Christ. They crucified him, okay? Um, and all he was doing was there to serve. And it's the same thing, you guys, with you. Like, the more you try to give, the more polar you are, the more you're doing that, you'll get lovers and people who will follow you to the end of the world, and you'll get people who hate you. And you have to be okay with that, okay? And that's going to be a hard part for a lot of you guys. It was super hard for me. Um, in fact, it was really hard for my wife. She remember the first time she Googled my name and was, like, coming in, like, whoa, what's happening? Like, freaking out, right? And I was trying to explain. I'm like, well, I'm like... <laughs> Sometimes you got to ruffle some feathers to get some people to pay attention, right? Like, that's part of it. And I remember uh, she really struggled with it until the first time we went to a Tony Robbins event. Anyone here been to a Tony Robbins event? Man, if you guys haven't, like, make it a point to go soon before he loses his voice completely because it's, it's one of the most uh, life-transforming things you'll ever go through. But I remember going through that. We went through this entire experience. And, uh, and I mean, we just, my wife and I both went. It was just an amazing thing. And it was just like, man, look how much good he's doing for us and for the world and how many people he's changed. And then towards the end, he talked about, kind of about this concept. He talked about how, like, um, like, the more good you do, the more you try to serve people, the more people are going to resist. And uh, he talked about how, you know, just people are negative against him. And he said, he said, why do people do that? Why do people go and when you're trying to help, why do they come and fight against you? And what he said was really profound, I thought. He said, he said you look at it, there's, there's two ways to build the biggest building in town. One is to go out there and work your butt off and lay brick after brick after brick and build the biggest building in town. Second way to build the biggest building in town is knock down all the other buildings around you, okay? And so what's, there's two ways to do it. One's to work your butt off, and one's to knock things down. It's ways you knock things down. That's what people will do to you when you put yourself out there. And it's going to be scary at first, you guys, but I promise you it's worth it because when you, again, you, you can't affect and change and help people when you're neutral. And as soon as you're willing to be a little polar, you'll be able to get your followers who will follow you, and you'll be able to help them and serve them at a level you can't otherwise. I promise you that. Um, and, uh, and it's okay to be... To be uh, to have some of those things. You think about, I mean, again, Howard Stern's like a perfect example of that, right? He's offending people like crazy, but man, how many people, how many people are following him? Um, I was reading an article or uh, something one time about him, and they did this interview where they like, interviewed people that like, listened to Howard Stern for more than an hour at a time. And, or, they, or they interviewed people who liked Howard Stern and hated Howard Stern. And, and they interviewed, they had all these polls and stuff. It was like, um, how often do you listen to the people that liked him listened for like, I don't know, 43 minutes on average, and people who hated him was like 45 minutes. Like they listened longer. And then both people are like, why do you listen for so long every single day? And both of them said the exact same thing. I wanted to hear what he was going to say next. Okay? And that's what's got to be with you guys, you guys. If you want to stay relevant, especially in this noisy internet world where things are happening and moving all the time, um, you have to stay relevant. And you do that by, by taking a stand in things and being a little bit, uh, a little, having some polarity. Okay? I've been doing this now for over a decade. In the last 10 years, and I've been friends with people in, in most of the different niches and verticals, I can tell you how many of the gurus, whatever you want to call them, have come and disappeared, and they don't stay relevant. I think the biggest reason why they don't still stay relevant is they come in and they, they're neutral, and people forget about them. It's so easy to be forgotten online. If I don't email my list for two weeks, my response drops in half. Is that crazy? Two weeks. Two weeks, you guys will forget my name. So I've got to be relevant all the time in front of you. I've got to be doing new things, new ideas. I've got to be shocking. Like, whatever I can do to stay relevant, and it all ties into all these elements of attractive character. Okay? All right. Okay, now we're switched over to the identity. So the elements of the, of the, of the attractive character, these are things that all of you guys need to have. Okay? And in your workbook, you've got spots that I recommend tonight or whenever you have to sit down. Sit down and start thinking about your backstory. What's the parts you're going to share? What makes sense? What leads people to where you want to go? Okay, that's the first thing. Second thing, write down as many parables as you can think of. Uh, character flaws, things you're willing to share that somehow draw people closer to you. And then polarity. What are the things that you're, that you're uh, passionate about? That you know are going to piss some people off, but you're going to do it anyway just because you care. Okay? So that's the thing. So all the elements are you. Now the identity, typically um, you're going you're gonna to take on one of these identities. You're not going to be all these things. Okay? Um, but you're going to take one of these. Now you can, throughout your life, you can, throughout your, your career, whatever you want to call it, you can shift different types of identities, but typically you're one identity at a time. Okay? 
So some examples. Uh, the first identity is the leader. Okay, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, the leader is the person saying, I'm the leader, come follow me, let's go do some stuff. Okay, a lot of the people you buy from, that's, you think about that, that's the leadership one, right? Pretty simple. Next, so uh, I think in your notebook I put an example, like an example of a leader would be like Donald Trump, okay? I am Donald Trump, I'm the richest man in the world, blah, 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 like this is, this is me, right? I'm a leader, follow me. Next one is the adventure, the crusader. This is someone that's more like, I'm successful in spite of it all, and I just want to have parties and have fun. Okay, you look at the person I wrote your book for this is like Richard Branson. Super successful, but like, he's not like a leader, but he's like, this guy who's awesome, he's doing cool stuff, I just want to follow him, right? This guy's awesome, I want to do whatever he's doing. Okay? The next one is the reporter, or the evangelist. Okay, now, a hint on this one, for a lot of you guys, if you're just getting started or uh, in your business, this is probably the easiest one to begin with. When I got started in my business, this is what I began with, is being the reporter, okay? I put in your book, uh, for report, I put Larry King. Okay, Larry King, what's he good at? Oprah. Nobody really knows. What about Oprah? What's Oprah good at? I don't know. Like, I don't really know, but what she's good at is interviewing, right? So when I got started in this business, I didn't know internet marketing, and I couldn't afford internet marketing courses, so I was like, hey, I got this idea. What if I go to all these people that are selling all these courses, and I interview them about what they're doing, and I'll just get it for free? That's a good idea, right? I was too dumb to know that was, a, like, not probably a good idea. So I called all these guys up and interviewed them. They gave me all the best stuff for free, and I was interviewing all these people. And what was cool is like, I would promote these interviews, and it'd be like me with uh, Guru A, right? And then me with Guru B, me with Guru C. And pretty soon people see me with that guy, and that guy, and that, that guy, and then they're like, man, this guy must know what he's talking about. And suddenly like, oh, look at me. Okay, it's really interesting how you can do that. So a lot of times, if you don't have a brand yet, or you don't have a following, you can leverage other people and start out kind of the reporter. Okay, I know tons of different people that have launched businesses. That's the, that's the core way they've started. Yeah. So I'll repeat that for the camera. Um, what he was basically asking was, uh, for someone who, who's built a platform already, and maybe they've come in with like a leader or whatever, and now they want to get to the next level, like would it be a, a wise thing or it would be smart to do is to, to leverage like the, the reporter evangelist to go to a level higher than you and to go bring in experts at that level to, to help rise yourself to that next status and to, to be able to tap into their, their communities, right? Yeah, the answer is definitely yes. Um, you can shift between things. You can use different tools for sure, and that's a very, very smart thing to use. Um, in fact, in, in, a, in our business, I was telling our, our, uh, our group yesterday about this a little bit, but right now, like, we've got a pretty big following of people we're selling to, and I was the same thing, like, how do I, how do I get my, my tentacles out into more people's audiences? Like, I want to suck all their customers into me, right? And so one of the strategies we're doing is we're uh, doing these interviews with same thing with experts, people that either my level or above my level, whatever, I don't really care, just people that have a following, and I'm doing these interviews with them, they're really, really cool, and then, uh, like for example, I did one with, uh, with Natasha the other day, so she's got a whole audience that are branded people that are branding, and like, she's got a really cool audience, I want to tap into her audience. So I'm doing a podcast, we interview her, and when it's done, I'll put it up online, and all of a sudden, like, her face and my face are there together, and we're kind of co-branded, and I can advertise on Facebook to her following, and they see her and me, and suddenly, like, I'm introduced to this new audience that I, I didn't have access to before. And so there's, the, there's part of the strategy of what we're doing on that is definitely to be able to, to leverage and tap into audiences we didn't have access to before. Cool, so reporter evangelist. And then the last one, and this is my favorite one by far, is the reluctant hero. And you notice like when we talk about the copywriting stuff on day Saturday, um, I'm going to show you how we always weave this into to our copy. But the reluctant hero is the guy or the girl who... Um, who didn't want to be the hero, they didn't want to be this guru, this person teaching, or like they didn't have any desire to do that, but they went out there on this journey to try to figure something out, and they kind of stumbled into this stuff, and it worked, and they just, they, they saw how cool it was, and they just had to share it with other people. They wanted to, to bring this to more people, and so they kind of reluctantly stepped into this hero role against their, against their, what they wanted to do, okay? And I think this is the role that um, people resonate with the most, okay? From the movies, the example I put in the book was, was Frodo Baggins, right? The ring, like he didn't want to take the ring and go through this whole huge horrible ordeal, but he felt like he was called and he had to do it. It was his mission. Okay, and I'm sure a lot of you guys are kind of like that. Like you didn't want to be on stage teaching stuff, you don't, but like, but you know what you have it provides value and it can help somebody else. And uh, the nice about the reluctant hero is it's more humble and people relate to it a lot better. The leader, some people pull off the leader very, very well. I'm the leader, come follow me. I can't do that as well. Um, I've always tried to come to a point more like the reluctant hero, like, hey, this stuff's awesome. We're doing it. It's working. I want to show it to you guys too because it, I, I'm just excited, okay? And I know it can help you as well. So those are kind of the identities. And like I said, um, these can change throughout your life. And you'll see, and, and one of these will make the most sense. One will fit your personality type the best, but it's okay to shift them and to move them. But it's, it's important right now to pick like which one you want to start with. Like, am I going to be the, the guy that's interviewing people and trying to find a bunch of experts? Am I going to be the person that's more 
uh, the reluctant hero ought to be the leader. Like, who, what one makes most sense for your, your current personality type? Okay? There's the identities. And then the last section here, again, this is stuff that we'll weave in and out all throughout all your communication. And we're going to talk more communication. But when you're communicating with your audience through any media, through any distribution channel you're building, so through videos, through podcasts, through webinars, through all the different ways that you're going to be learning how to communicate with people, you're always sharing different storylines, different things to, to grab people and to, to suck them in and, and different ways to, to stay relevant. And so this is kind of my checklist. There's more storylines than this. But these are the core ones that I try to draw from. The first one is loss and redemption. Okay? I had this great thing and then I lost it all and I had to come back and, and, and build it back up again. Okay? It's a great storyline. Now, an example of how, how I would use something like this, is let's say I'm sending out an email today to promote something. If I have a, a loss and redemption story that somehow ties back into whatever it is I'm selling over here, it's a great time to use that. Okay? Let me tell you guys a story about how, like for example, if I was trying to sell, um, or when I did, when I sold our, our High Ticket Secrets product, um, was that a month ago or so we did the webinar? Um, the whole story we told was Lost Redemption. I told a story about how we built up this huge call center. It was awesome. We had 100 people. We were cranking, making a million dollars a month. It was awesome. And I lost it all. And all of a sudden, everyone's like, oh, man. That was it. Character flaws. That hits like all sorts of backstory. All these things are like, wow, he's like me. He screwed up bad. He almost went bankrupt. Like, I haven't even gone bankrupt yet. I'm way better than that guy. Like, I'm trying to bring down to their level, right? But I'm like, but guess what? It didn't end right there. I redeemed myself. I came back. We changed some things. We tweaked some things. And this time we were smarter and we were better and we redeemed ourselves by doing it this way. This is the new way we do it. And it's, this is why it's so much better. And boom, all of a sudden when we sold that, I mean, that webinar crushed it for us. It did awesome. Okay, so loss and redemption. And so you can use that from, again, these storylines you can use from an entire webinar. You can use them just with a single email. There's, in a video you make, there's, there's just a, a million ways to use it, but this is just a storyline to understand. Next one is us versus them. I don't remember the example I used in the book for us versus them. Oh, yeah, Mac versus PC. Uh, you guys all like the Mac versus PC commercials where you're like the guy who's nerdy and like, I'm a PC, and then like the cool hip guy you want to hang out with Mac. Like, that's us versus them, right? Do you want to be that guy or do you want to be this guy? Um, I remember when, uh, when Xbox and Wii came out, they did a, a spoof on that. Did you guys ever see it? Where it's like this big, huge girl in sweaters and then like this little skinny girl in the bikini. And the skinny girl in the bikini was supposed to be the Wii. She's like, I'm fun to play with. And then the girl in the sweater is like, well, I've got 64-bit, blah, 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 blah. And I, my graphics card did it. And then the girl, I'm fun to play with. And they kept going back and forth. And anyway, just playing off that us versus them, right? Um, think about in your business right now, like, what's the us versus them? Okay? Think about the insurance, like uh, Progressive and Geico. They're always fighting each other, us versus them, okay? Um, satellite and cable, yes. Um, Anyway, all of your businesses, there's an us versus them. One of the best things you can do, and we'll talk more about this in the inception side, is, is, like, is like finding a common enemy. Um, you look at, and this is probably not, anyway, if you look at like how, uh, how cults are started, I just watched this whole, anyway, not that I'm trying to start a cult. It'd be kind of cool. But like, I like reading books about how people start cults, because you understand like the psychology, like how do people, how does some charismatic leader get up and cause people to do crazy stuff that's just, like, I want to learn that so I can sell people more of my stuff, right? So I like studying like, that stuff, and it's really interesting. One of the, the keys you look at any good cult is they, they find and they define a common enemy. Okay? And they have this common enemy, and they fight against that, that person. So for you, who's the common enemy in your business? Okay? In, the, in my world, usually the common enemy is like the guru, the big bad guru, right? Everyone's like, oh, this guru is a horrible person, but I'm awesome. It's like, it's just, they're the same person, but they, they cast stones at this other person, right? So for you, who can you cast stones at? Okay? If, you're in the, if you're like a natural health person, you'd be casting stones at the people who pop pills. If you're selling pills, cast stones at the natural health people. Right? You're fighting against who you're, who you're going against. For example, when we launched our, um, our Nurcell supplement, but anyway, these guys that, that we're competing against um, are people who, who basically stole from me. And so I was just like, all right, instead of like fighting them back like the way most people do, let's just compete against them, right? So we went straight head-to-head, -head, like straight competition with them, right? And so their supplement is all like chemical-based and everything like that. And so ours is all like natural-based. We have very big us versus them. And it's more of like a personal, um, it's more spite than marketing that I did this whole thing, <laughs> to be honest. But it works really, really good. In fact, if you type their company name into Google, the very first video that pops up is why Neurocell is better than Neuropathy Treatment Group. And they emailed me. They were so pissed. Like, take that video down. I'm like, what? Are you serious? No, I'm not taking it down. This is like the part of the fun. So, Think about that, though. And so for us, we're fighting like they're chemical-based. 
they're horrible, they're evil, whatever, and we're pure, natural, we're herbal, we're like all these things why we're good. So think about your product, like what makes you different and find whoever that common enemy is and then harp on that, use it over and over and over, using your emails, your sales letters, your web, like all the different communications that you're having with your audience, keep using those things because when you, um, when you will, uh, when you find a common enemy, that's this whole, that's how people will start, start um, coming with you. Now, to, to kind of give you guys a hint, this whole polarity thing we're talking about, a lot of times the common enemy is this other group over here. Right? The more heat you add to something, the more excited people are going to get. You're going to get a raving group of people who are fanatical in that direction. All right, moving on. Uh, number three, before and after. This one's easy, right? Weight loss, you see all the time. Here I was huge, now I'm skinny. Make money. I was poor, now I'm rich. Uh, I was unhealthy, now I'm super healthy. Before and afters are, are easy. And what's cool about these is you can do them for your own, about your own story, but also other people's, like your success stories, your students. Other people are doing whatever you're doing, right? Um, all right, amazing discovery. It's pretty simple, like, oh, I figured out the coolest thing in the world. You guys, you got to come see it. Check this out. Secret telling is more like, hey, guys, I got to sing. I can't, tell I can't tell everybody about it, but it's really, really good. Um, if you come on this private webinar, I'm going to show you. Or, hey, if you, give me your, if you pay five bucks, I'll ship you this thing. It's totally secret. It's going to be awesome. You'll find out all, all my best stuff. Okay, secret telling is really good. And third-person testimonials, other people bragging about you. Anytime I get a good testimonial, I'm sending it out, like, Send it out to the list. Make a video. Send it, whatever you can do, because the more of those things that are going out, the better. Okay? And so those are some of the storylines. And there's more storylines you guys can, can do. But those are the core six that I use. Um, I have this printed out next to my desk every single day. I look at it, and I'm writing emails, or I'm um, creating blog posts. Or doing, whatever I'm doing, I'm trying to think, like, like uh, which one of these elements can I use today? I'm going to do us versus them. I'm going to tell a backstory about this. Okay? Or I'm going to do this. And I kind of start trying to figure out how to blend these things together to create um, good things I can put out there that get people... Um, get people to, to be attracted and come back to me, okay? And so what's cool about this, you guys, at least for me, is when I started understanding these principles and how they all work together, and I, I could start engineering them, okay? The first, I don't know, a couple years of my business, I was just doing stuff, and luckily I did a couple of these things right, and so I got people buying my stuff. But as soon as I understood that and I could engineer it, it changed everything, right? It's kind of like we talked about in the last session. Like, as soon as I understood who my actual person I wanted to sell was, I could change the bait where I was looking and get the exact person I want. It's the same thing here. Um, change, change how you, how you, these things that you're normally doing subconsciously, become aware of them, and then manipulate them to be exactly what you want to get the right people to come to you. Okay, okay good question. This question is, what do you do first? Do you create the product and then the avatar, or the avatar on the product? The reality is it depends, because sometimes you'll hit, you'll run to a product, and you're like, oh, I, that, I love this, I want to figure out something behind it. Um, and that's one way to do it. I personally like the other way, like, who, who's the kind of person I want to serve here? Um, and go that way, but it works both directions. It just kind of depends on what you're, where you're starting at. Like with our, with our supplement, it was completely just like, I was trying to like, out of spite, beat these guys out. Like that was the only reason. And then we found the customer, luckily. Whereas this business, we very focused on like, who do we want, and let's create products and things that'll serve them and make them want to come in. So you can go either way. Or now, excuse me, now, now that we're kind of building this attractive character, like what distribution channel should I be building? Okay, like Oprah was probably a good idea for when she was sitting down the first time and be like, Hmm, I should, be a, a, I should be writing newspaper articles. It probably wasn't a good fit for her. She was awesome on TV. So that was the distribution channel that she chose. And one thing that I really struggled with for a long time is that I thought I had to be doing all of these, and because of that, I wasn't ever good at any of them. Um, and so for most of you guys, you're not going to do all of them. I'm going to share five with you, and there's, you need to pick two of these five. And one of them has to be email. So good news is I'm going to help you guys email, but email you have to do, because that's, like, that's, like, that's better than primetime TV. It's like the best one. It's the easiest to do. It's, it's, uh, so you have to do email. Okay? Now I'm going to liken these to, to other things that you are familiar with. So email is very similar to direct mail. Right? Back in the day, we put letters and envelopes and mail them to people. And that's how we get access to them. So direct mail is like email, except for it's, it's a lot cheaper, which is nice. This question is, do I recommend direct mail these days? Yeah, definitely. We use it for front-end acquisition, but also for, um, for back-end stuff. I bet probably a third of you guys are here, probably from a direct mail campaign that uh, got you to call into our, to the call center. So yeah, definitely use, use both. Um, more so usually on like, if you're gonna do direct mail, it's better, like the way to cut your teeth and start is do it to your existing customers to, to upgrade them, to send them up, as opposed to doing cold, like to get new customers, because it's really expensive and really hard to get it right to get new customers, but it's really easy to your existing customers to make it work. Uh, number two is Facebook. Um, someone was talking about Drew yesterday. So this is Drew Cannoli. Um, I don't know what he does like on YouTube and other things. I think he's got a couple channels, but he's awesome on Facebook. If you look right here, he's got one point something million followers on Facebook, and that's where he's at. Okay? 
If you look at um, any of the big, I mean, on Facebook, there's tons of people killing it on Facebook. But usually, like, they're really, really good at Facebook. Now, it's interesting, you look at like Neil Patel, he's not on Facebook anywhere. Okay, so Facebook was not his, his channel that he, he focused on. He's focusing on his blog, which we'll talk about in a second. But some people focus on Facebook. So if you like love Facebook, this could be a channel you focus on. I personally hate Facebook. Okay, if you notice my fan page, ask me when the last time I updated my fan page was. I don't know. It's been months. Like, I hate Facebook. Every time I log in, I get the sick feeling. You know, you log in, you see the little numbers at the top. And I have like a thousand plus friend, new friend requests. I've got like 80 in new messages and all this stuff. And I just like, I get sick to my stomach. And I'm like, I always, every time I'm on Facebook, I'm like, Ugh, and then I just turn it down. Like, I, I can't, like, it makes me sick to even log in. So for me, I've tried to do this distribution. I've tried, like, everyone's doing Facebook. I gotta do Facebook. I, I can't do it. Like, it's just not for me, okay? There's other things that work really good for me, but this one's not for me. Some of you guys, if you're on Facebook all day long, this could be your channel, okay? If you're that guy or girl who just loves Facebook, like, this might be it, but for me, it's not. So Facebook is the equivalent of networking, going to networking events, hanging out and talking. Yes, Facebook ads. I'm talking right now about ways to, uh, the distribution, the, the organic distribution channel you're gonna be building through your attractive character. So where, where, what platform are you standing on shouting out, look how cool I am, here's my backstory. here's my product, here's my, you know, what's, what's, the, what's the platform we're standing on? So yeah, you're right, paid ads are different. We use paid ads all the time in Facebook, but for a platform to build your attractive character around, it's different, okay? Number three is YouTube. Anyone ever seen this dude on YouTube? Nobody? DJ has, okay, so here's the story. So there's this homeless dude, well he's not homeless, he's got an RV, so it's, he's got a home. Um, he makes these YouTube videos of him in front of his, his RV, juicing, usually without a shirt on. One video he was dressed like Jesus. I don't know, he's really weird, right? Um, but this dude loves juicing, super passionate. Every single day he's making juicing videos of him out in front of his RV, doing stuff, right? And he's got a huge following, 300,000 people saw this video. Everyone's videos gets, you know, quarter million or more views. And, uh, and so one day our buddy, Garrett, is like obsessed with this guy. Like, this guy's awesome. He's like the best juicing guy in the world. So Garrett emails him. He's like, hey, man, can I, like, can I call you on the phone? I'd love to like, pick your brain on juicing. And the guy's like, yeah, you can. Um, here's, a, here's a PayPal order button. Send me 500 bucks. We'll talk for an hour. This dude who's homeless is charging 500 bucks an hour for juicing advice. <laughs> Does that help anybody understand that, like, the power of a platform? Okay. <laughs> He's, it's because he's, he's out there, he's attractive character, all this stuff's out there and people are following him, he's got fans. Now he's not famous, most of you guys never heard of him, but he's internet famous. Okay, I was at church the other day, and at church I try to like not tell people what I do because it's really hard when people want to ask you all sorts of questions. So I, I, I'm pretty like, I don't talk about it and I'm kind of quiet, I'm a really shy person in, in my real life. But every once in a while someone finds out and they'll come to me, they're like, hey, I saw your video, man, I didn't know you were famous. I'm like, no, no, I'm internet famous. Big difference. Internet famous means none of you guys know who I am, okay? And that's the key. Like, you guys want to become internet famous. You don't want to go be, like, real famous because that's not fun. But internet famous is awesome because there's a segment of people who know you, like you, and love you, and will pay you 500 bucks an hour to teach them how to juice stuff. You like juicing? Your juice made was awesome. I guarantee it's better than that. 500 bucks an hour. Doctors don't charge that much, do they? Maybe they do. I don't know. But that's the power of this stuff, you guys. You build this attractive character, it's, it's interesting. People don't look at you like another person. Even though you're doing this stuff with backstory, all these things are trying to, be, to relate to their level, they still look at you at a different level, okay? They look at um, this guy at a different level because he's built the distribution channel. So for him, YouTube's his channel, okay? For other people, uh, a lot of the weight loss guys, YouTube's their channel. If you love videos, man, I would, I would set up shop on YouTube and i make tons of videos and build my following there. Jake Hiller, jump, jump manual guy, YouTube is his channel. He's made video, 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 and built a huge following on YouTube, and that was his, that was his distribution channel to the world, okay? Um, so yeah, think about it, if that's, if that's the one that resonates most with you. And that one's the equivalent of TV. Yes, look at, so I just bought a brand new 60-inch uh, TV, and we plugged it in, and I couldn't figure out how to get to the real channels. Like, I couldn't, like, it was really hard to get to the real channels, but there's all these little apps. And you click on the app, and it takes you to YouTube, and, you subs and everyone I've ever subscribed to YouTube channels right there. So it was easier for me to find people I had subscribed to on YouTube than it was for me to find like Fox TV. I couldn't get to my news channels. And that's the future where things are going right now. This is the, this is the big shift that's made it so all of us can become super rich that we couldn't before. Okay? Uh, before, we had to get on TV and we had to do all this stuff to become famous. Now, you just make a YouTube channel, you get some following, people go subscribe to you. When they sit down at night, they turn on the TV and they watch you on YouTube. Is that weird? Like, it's not like it used to be where if you, were, you had to go on your computer and like find this person, like you, people subscribe to you now and then they subscribe that to their TV and you become late night TV for them. 
That's the place we're going. If you start focusing now, I've been telling people this for 10 years, but if you start focusing now on, if YouTube's your channel, start focusing on growing that, in a year from now, five years from now, 10 years from now, you have a million viewers, guess what you've got? You got more viewers than any local station in the world. People are gonna be coming begging you to buy ads from you, okay? You own distribution. And so I would make it, if, if YouTube is your channel, if that's the, the platform you wanna pick, is focus on that and grow and grow your following because that, that, that following will be worth so much money. Okay, cable networks are becoming and buying you guys for millions of dollars. Okay, it's happening right now. People are getting bought out because of their followings. It's not, um, it's, it's happening right now. It's gonna happen more and more as it's harder and harder for all these, these cable shows and all these stations to, to compete. Because right now I can get the exact content I want from the dude who I wanna hear from for free where I can't get this juicing guy on TV. I listen to some weird juicing person who, you know I mean? Like, this guy is only on YouTube and if that's the attractive character I'm following, this is the only place I can get him, okay? Uh, next for podcasts, I just started getting into podcasting. It's really fun. Anyone here listen to the Marketing in Your Car podcast? Yeah. So this is my, this is uh, my my new channel, one of my new channels, and it's my favorite. I tried to do podcasting a couple times. I've, it's really been hard because typically most people make like an hour long show, and I could never do that. So I started my very first one, where it's just while I'm driving to the office, five minutes a day, I just record my thoughts of the day, like, oh, this is something cool we just did that worked awesome. So if you guys aren't listening to it, you probably should. Like all my best ideas, like I literally share them all through my podcast. Um, and it's free. You just go to marketingyourcar.com, click on subscribe, and then it shows up on your phone. And so what's happening is everyone subscribes to that thing. It's like my own radio channel, my own radio station. I can send messages to everyone who's listening whenever I want. And it's the coolest thing in the world. And then what's really interesting is I got some friends who are, who are killing their podcast. They got way more people listening to me. But it's literally like a radio show. One of my buddies... Um, he does, uh, he does an episode every single day, and it's 30 minutes long. He has a, a, a sponsorship ad at the beginning of the podcast, one in the middle, and one at the end. Um, he gets paid per uh, CPM, so per, per uh, 1,000 users. He gets paid some for each of these companies. Right now, he gets, I don't know, 100,000 people listen to each one, something like that. And, uh, and each company, this company that does the front one pays him, I think, like three or $400 an episode. The middle one pays him like $200 an episode. The last one pays him like $500. So he makes $1,200 in ads every time he does a podcast. How often do you think he does a podcast? Seven days a week. He says, Russell, if I don't do a podcast, I lose $1,200. I don't have to sell anything. I just have to do it, and then I push upload, and I make $1,200. Okay? I was like, I want to do that. I want to do that like three times a day, four times a day. Okay? But that's literally what's happening, you guys, is you're creating your own radio station. Okay? Think about Rush Limbaugh. Think about all these people. Like, think, um, I'm not a big radio guy, but all the big radio people, they've got these distribution channels, right? They're getting smaller. They're shrinking because where's people going? They're going to podcasts, subscribing to people they actually want to hear and niche specific stuff they want. And if that's you, and you start focusing today, tomorrow, and within a year from now, two years from now, five years from now, you've got a huge following of people. You can first off sell them anything you want down your distribution channel. You can sell ads. You can do spawn. Like, there's so many things you can do when you have distribution. Okay? And the way people are going to listen to you gets all the attractive character stuff. Because they're going to give you a shot. If they like your thing, they're going to keep listening forever. Okay? Um, so the podcast is equivalent to radio. And then blogging is like newspapers. Okay, all this media that we're doing, you guys, online, it's all stuff that happened offline. But the internet made it so that all of us can compete. Okay? All of us can step up, and I can compete directly head-to-head -head with the New York Times, and I can win. We couldn't do that before, but nowadays we can. Yeah. So this question was, like, if, I, if I'm making a YouTube video, I don't want to just on YouTube. Like, how else can I do it? And definitely, and we're, we're going to talk a lot about promoting something. If you make a YouTube video, we want to promote the thing everywhere to get people back. What I'm saying is, is there's, different, there's different platforms, right? Email, again, we're all doing email. But networking, some of you guys are great networkers. That's going to be your, your, your thing. Some of you guys are great on video. That should be your, your core. Some of you guys are great uh, radio, should be podcasting. Some of you guys are great writers, should be blog. And they're all going to cross promo, but there, yeah, there should be one that's like, this is my core, this is my baby. Because as soon as you're doing two things or three things, man, it's hard to wake up every day, do a show and write a blog post and do a podcast. Like it's, I've tried, I tried. We had teams of people trying to like keep the system down. We were hitting all the, the channels, and finally I came to the realization. I'm just like, you know what? Everyone who's crushing it, they're crushing it on one thing, and they may add another second one later. But usually they focus on one first. So let's say it's let's say it's like Drew Canoli, right? He builds up his, his Facebook to a million people. Now for him to come back and say, hey. You know what, I've got a million people here, I'm gonna add a YouTube channel. And he adds it and boom, 50% of people come over here. Now you can do two a lot easier. But if you're trying to grow and do like two or three at a time, it's never gonna work. So to begin with today, pick one, focus on that. And someday, somewhere down the line you can, you can expand and try to do more, but right now just try to do one. Julie? Ooh, that's a good question. So is it more like what you wanna do or more your audience? I would say more what you wanna do, because otherwise you're not, I mean there's, 
That's a double-edged sword. You're trying to trick me. No, but because you're because you're right, your audience needs to be there. Um, but at the same time, like if it's if it's videos and you hate doing videos, you're never gonna do them. Um, and you've got to, I mean, it, this is like it's gotta be something you're passionate about. You wake up in the morning, like when I do marketing in your car, wake up, I turn on my phone, I start driving, I'm talking, I'm like, I'm passionate about that. For me to sit down and like write a blog post, I literally will sit down, I'll look at that thing for like three hours. I'm just like, huh. <laughs> Crap. But everyone's reading my you know, Neil Patel, everyone's reading his blog. Yeah, but Neil likes to blog. No one's following him on YouTube or Facebook, but his blog's awesome. So it's like, what's the channel that you, you thrive in the best? And I think that you can get your, I, th I think, my guess is that there's people in every one of these channels in whatever space you're in. Um, some there may be more pre pre prevalent, um, but I would, I would focus on what you like the best or else you're not gonna do it. Um, so that's a big key. Um, all right, so that's kind of the, the attractive character stuff, you guys. Um, if I could say one thing of everything you're gonna do that's gonna like, be the amplifier for your business, it's like the raw, you bring out like your raw passion as much as possible. Like that's, that's you know, I look at guys like Jake Hill, or I look at Gary Vaynerchuk, I look at everyone who's, who I know who's successful and who's internet famous, who's growing businesses in any space, they're all hyper, super passionate and excited about the thing and they're just sharing and they're giving and they're, they're trying to do as much as they can. And because of that giving action, all the stuff, people start being attracted and you start coming back to you. And, and uh, it's just, it works. It works every single time. I think it's the foundation for everything else we're gonna be talking about. Yeah. So one of the key things I wanna teach you guys this week, you don't have to know how to do any of this stuff, okay? There are people way smarter than me who do that kind of stuff. So I'd Google like, set up a podcast, who can I hire, and then find someone to hire to do that. Um, one of, the, one of the other stumbling blocks I think a lot of you guys are going to have throughout any of this business is, is, uh, is trying to become good at doing all this kind of stuff. I have no idea how to set up a podcast. I literally, I record myself on my phone and then I email that audio to somebody else and then it shows up on iTunes. I have no idea how that works. I don't know what he does. Um, he has like a little music intro at the beginning and the end and it just works. Um, so there's people you can hire on anything. Um, Fiverr.com, you can find someone five, for five bucks can, do, can turn your can make your music and I'm acting dumber than I am um, but I want I want to illustrate a point though is like those guys who are really smart are going to struggle in this business you're going to try to do everything I can figure it out I, don't try to figure it out the only thing you guys need to understand is the stuff we're talking about the conceptual like all this stuff this is an important part all the tactics all the little things is all stuff you can hire you can learn you can whatever but but focus on like this bigger picture the strategy stuff because the strategy what makes the money the tactics are all things you can hire out you can find people to do um, and it's not, not that important, okay? Um, so use, using sites like Fiverr.com, F-I-V-E-R-R.com is a great place. For five bucks, people do almost anything you can dream of. Um, another site that I use a lot is Freelancer.com, Freelancer and Odesk.com. These are sites you can post anything in the world, and people will do it for you. They'll bid. People will fight to do it for you for as cheap as possible. Um, I graduated from Boise State with a stunning 2.1 GPA. And I did that by outsourcing my homework to Romania. And it, um, <laughs> it got me to where I am today. Like literally, you can get anything you want done on these outsourcing sites. You can hire people that have majors in English to write English papers for you for like $2 an hour. You can hire programmers with PhDs in programming for three, four bucks an hour to program anything you can dream of. Okay? So stop trying to be super, super smart. Like, that doesn't help at all. There's people smarter than you, and they work in third world countries, and for two bucks an hour, they can do what'll take you days or years or months to figure out. Um, I would say one of my superpowers is I'm really good at hiring people for really, really cheap on these sites. Like, that's really the re reality of what it is. Um, and so learn how, to, learn how to do it. It's really easy, um, and it's, uh, it'll, it'll free you from trying to learn how to do all this kind of stuff. Thanks for asking that. I hope that, that helps. Through the next session, we're going to be talking about how to charge more than your customers, uh, or excuse me, than your competitors, because that's the key to, to scaling a business. You've got to be able to charge them a lot, and uh, it's going to be fun. You're going to learn some cool stuff.